British Embassy residence. It's beautiful. You're not just scanning out the place to rob it. Then. Cozy about just running in there. Do not approach this one. Good morning, guys. Here in Budapest, Hungary. In my opinion, one of the most beautiful cities in the world. But if you're here to see all the beautiful sights, the uh, tourist attractions, don't watch this video. This video is about contrast. The contrast between the wealthy and the poor. So we're gonna go to a beautiful neighborhood to start this. And then go to the other, other side of the tracks, which is actually near the tracks, near the train tracks, to show the other story. I always love doing this type of work where you dive into the contrasts of a place and just show the different narratives and the different stories that coexist. Uh, this isn't every big city. So today, it's Budapest. I think you'll like it. And of course, we gotta meet some people, run into some of the locals. That's always my, always my mission. Okay, let's do this. See you. Rojadam is the name of this neighborhood, which means, I believe, Rose Hill. And this is on the Buddha side of the city. So it was two cities before Buddha and Pest on both sides of the river. Now it's Budapest. The locals say Budapest. So here we have a nice home. I'm not gonna be the architect here and tell you exactly what style that is. What I can say is it's beautiful. Where are the, the nicest homes? This direction? All over, I guess. <laughs> All over? Okay. Yeah. This is interesting. Beautiful vegetation in here. Old growth trees. Got a few modern buildings sprinkled in here. But overall, this looks like old Hungarian money. Could be wrong on that. Maybe the uh, film stars live here. Budapest is a fascinating place. It's, it's seen a little bit of everything. I mean, the Mongols killed roughly half the population. Uh, before that, it was the Romans. After the Mongols, you have the, uh, the Ottomans. In this neighborhood, was where a lot of, I read it's where the, a lot of the Ottomans, the Turks, lived when they controlled Budapest. I think that was, part of the 15th and 16th centuries. Yeah, then it was capital, co-capital, the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. The Soviets put their toes in here for a while. A satellite state of the Soviet Union. And now Hungary is on its own. Uh, that is just a little breeze by of the history here. I like the fact that these fences are so tiny. If someone wanted to get in, they could. You have a, a window on the lower level without bars, some with bars, but some without. And I feel like when a society fails is when you have to have huge electric fences around places like this, guard dogs, uh, guards, you know, completely off limits. People have to really just barricade themselves in and it's not that feel here feels like I am the only one on these streets. And I promise this video will get more exciting when we go to the other side of the tracks. Here's some more beauty though. Just some basic cars. An old Chevy, a Citroen. I'm not a fan of Chevy, but I do not understand with all the choices in this world for what to buy as far as a car goes, why anyone would buy a French car. And you'd only know if you drove one and then compared with pretty much any other car in the world. British flag. It's not the consulate, because I just went by there. Okay, it's the uh, British Embassy residence. Guys, look high here in Budapest. 
beautiful home. We got a nice backyard zone here. Well, through the trees, swimming pool. A lot of these embassy workers live quite well. Yeah, so a lot of these government workers living abroad. Huh? It's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. It is Are you I'm a bit surprised that you're filming it? Oh, these gardens are amazing. I'm just doing uh, videos of this beautiful neighborhood. Okay. Are you the British consular? Uh, I'm my husband's the British ambassador. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So How do you just, like it here? It's wonderful. Yeah. Do you live here? I'm here for a couple of days. That's it, unfortunately. Okay. You're not just scanning out the place to rob it. Then. <laughs> you know, no, I got better it's things a to do. Unusual I'm not a criminal. Coming down with a camera. Really? Why? Yeah. It's the most yeah. beautiful home in the neighborhood. It is, I know. But it's... I like homes. Okay. Let me go there. Okay. How long have you lived here? Uh, we've lived here for four years. Yeah, this neighborhood is absolutely it's beautiful. But you're not Hungarian. Yeah. You can go there uh, hiking and biking in this direction to the park. Yeah. If you live uh, without family, then the inner city is cool as well to have a rooftop, yeah. a terrace or something like this. <laughs> bye bye. Ciao. Looks like a Chinese residence. So we have all, all the big nationalities doing their thing here. That guy was from Germany, just moved here. It will be interesting to see the contrast. I've asked quite a few locals. There's no like really terrible neighborhood, I don't think. Because I was I was told one the other day that's you know considered the bad bad hood. What is it, District 8? And I walked around and I actually found it to be quite nice. So I guess it's all your perspective. Let's jump the tracks and see what the other side looks like. Oh wow. Cool. And this, I was told, to the left of the train station is uh, one of the rougher neighborhoods. This but Coletti uh, neighborhood. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, definitely a different vibe though, a different feel. You can smell urine from the the street pissing. Yeah. But it doesn't feel that bad actually. Look at that, they have nice flowers along the whole street to see a lot of bars on the doors and windows I don't think oh, there's a sketchy looking guy coming this way I'm not gonna turn the camera reminds me a little bit of Catania in yeah. Sicily in Italy actually nicer than that though cleaner it's got some beautiful architecture it just needs a little sprucing up Maybe nighttime, it's a little sketchier here. I think I got bad info, bad intel. Not much to see here. I did get one other place though, one other place. That's just like a building. It's not even really a neighborhood, it's a building. And I was directed there. Some of the kid, there were kids, but they're saying, you know, if I go there in the day, it's gonna be super dangerous with the camera. So, I think we're fine, but let's check it out. Three miles later, I got a tip. This neighborhood, Haas U. I'm probably completely pronouncing that incorrectly. Hungarian has many dots and accent marks, but that's how it's spelled out. Haas U is the so-called hardest looking neighborhood in Budapest. It doesn't really look like it so far. I think it's 
in here. I'm not gonna jump the fence, but I'll try going around the block here. Okay, so it looks like some people are living in there and some places are vacant. Definitely not the charm of where we just were today. I'm not feeling cozy about just running in there with the camera, to be honest. And the point is not to belittle poverty or, you know, make a mockery of this. What I want to show is there are always different narratives occurring in a city and different stories happening at the same time. So there will not be a British lady coming out of one of these places uh, worried about me robbing her house tonight. <laughs> That's not happening. I bet there's some really cool people in here. I bet there's some really nice people. I'm sure there's some drug addicts. I'm sure there's a little bit of everything. Do not approach this one. Uh, speak English? No. Okay. All right, guys, I'm not going to go back. I just had a little, uh, not altercation, but they weren't happy to see me, let's say. So I'm going to end it here. That's it, guys. Two sides of the tracks here in Budapest. It is a beautiful city. Watch all the other videos on all the beauty. But I just want to give you a flavor on, you know, how people live at the extremes. Too bad I couldn't get in there. I just... You know, sometimes you just got to feel these things out and if the feeling's not there, going in with a camera is quite possibly the dumbest thing you can do. All right, just want to share some final thoughts with you about that video today. And I got to say, it doesn't always work out how you want it to. Uh, for example, at the end, I would have loved, I would have loved to connect with the locals in that neighborhood, in that shabbier looking neighborhood uh you know maybe gone into one of their apartments i'm sure there's some very kind people in there drank some tea and just shown the human side but it didn't work out that way at all i, I walked by there and that that kid or young 20 something he uh he gave me a very powerful message without saying anything. He looked in my eyes and was like, do not shoot video. Do not make video here. And I got it and I respected that and I moved on. So that's just how it works sometimes. My style is about spontaneity. It's about authentic connections. And sometimes it works out better than others. So. I hope I, can, I hope I did bring across the contrast here though. And every big city has that contrast. And I find this stuff interesting. That's why I'm making it. I, I think it is interesting to know that there are many narratives happening at the same time. So when someone says Budapest is like this or San Francisco is like this or Tehran is like this, depends who you're, whose glasses you're looking through, right? Like it depends whose life you're talking about. So that's what I try to capture. And I just want to say for, you know, if any of the people see from the neighborhood I went to at the end, it's, it's not, a, it's not uh, trying to criticize the neighborhood. It's actually trying to do the opposite. It was trying to, like, I'm sure just like anywhere, the, the poorest looking neighborhood is usually looked down upon. And I really wanted to bring out that human connectivity uh it just didn't happen oh well so until next video guys here is i'll leave you with this a look a view the beautiful city of budapest until next one